Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are doing another walking tour of Georgetown and this time we will cover Green Hall. On this YouTube channel, I want to take you to explore both the famous places of Penang as well as those you don't find on tourist brochures. This is the continuation of my other video where I took you to explore the Georgetown North Coast. I will put a link to that video on the top right as well as in the description of this video. What we have here is Wisma Sri Penang, an office high rise that was built in the 1980s. Before this building was erected, there was a fabulous three story mansion on this spot. If I'm not mistaken, that mansion is Green Hall, the building that gave the road its name. But before we go any further, let me first give you our starting point coordinates. If you ever want to do this work physically and in person, you can key these coordinates into your GPS, Google Maps or Waze and it will take you to where I started walking. This video is like your virtual tour guide. Just play it as you walk and it will do the explaining as we go along. As I myself explore Penang, I am often astonished by its urban morphology. The city is alive and vibrant and it keeps on evolving. The cluster of hawker stalls which we saw just now was not there just a few decades ago. As recently as the mid-1970s, Green Hall the Road came to an abrupt end just before the hawker stalls and then the land dropped straight down to the shore. The building right in front of us is Mutiara I and P. It wasn't there in the 70s. Instead, there were a few two-story bungalows here. This rather neglected park wasn't around either. The land came as far as the Mutiara IMP building and then it dropped to the shore with revertment that has seen better days. So much has changed since then. Today, this part of Georgetown is well known for its stock brokerage firms. But back in the 1970s, it was an entirely different neighborhood. At that time, there wasn't a single stock brokerage firm in Green Hall. There wasn't a single high-rise building either. There were only two-story pre-war houses like the ones on the right and two-story bungalows with compounds. It was a time when rent control was still in place and those bungalows, built in the pre-war era by wealthy individuals, were falling into disrepair, occupied by a multitude of working-class families. And why do I know Green Hall so well, considering I've never lived here? Although I've never lived on this street, throughout Standard 4, I spend my after-school afternoons here. My elder brother would fetch me from school, and then we would linger here at his friend's art studio, which was a converted bicycle shed at the end of Green Hall. But as I'm recalling the Green Hall of the 1970s, I am aware that it is from the mind's eye of a 10-year-old, so do forgive me if my recollection is not wholly accurate. Today, Green Hall is within the core zone of Georgetown's World Heritage Site, where height control is in place. In other words, many of the buildings you are seeing here would not be allowed to build today. But the 1970s, 80s and even early 90s was a different time. Back then, people were not that sentimental about preserving heritage. If World Heritage Inscription had taken place in the early 1980s, then today we would see those fabulous Green Hall bungalows still standing. But having said that, I do not entirely agree that height control should be one of the measures for World Heritage Inscription. I get it that it was put in place to prevent some developer from constructing a hideous monstrosity to loom over the World Heritage Site. But a blanket ban on buildings based on height demonstrates a lack of confidence in local architects' creativity and perhaps reflects the local authorities' inability to evaluate new buildings based on aesthetics and other merits. Having said my piece on height control, let's return to Green Hall. In the past three decades, it has seen a proliferation of lawyer firms. The local lawyer firms bear the same standard signage with white lettering over a black background. 
it's not entirely surprising why there are so many lawyer firms here as the Penang High Court is right at the end of the road or to be precise, the beginning of the road. We have started our walk at the end of Green Hall and we are making our way to the beginning of the road which is the junction with Light Street. I had so many fond memories of my standard 4 time at Green Hall. It was here that I learned to ride the bicycle. I would borrow an adult bicycle from my brother's friend and would ride it up and down the street. And come evening, an Indian Muslim laksa man would arrive bearing laksa on Ikandar. It was spicy but absolutely tasty. So much has changed since then. Green Hall has become the watering hole for lawyers. It is also home to the Bar Council Legal Aid Centre. And of all the lawyer firms on Green Hall, we are now approaching the one that was founded by the most famous and most beloved in Penang and possibly the whole Malaysia. The lawyer who is known by his moniker, Tiger of Jelutung. I am referring of course to the late Kapal Singh, whose lawyer firm is at number 17 Jalan Green Hall. You can't miss that building, it is known today as Bangunan Kapal Singh. His son Ram Kapal Singh, who is also a member of parliament for Bukit Kelugor, continues the practice today. Here it is, Bangunan Kapal Singh at Green Hall with a profile picture of the famous lawyer. The arrival of lawyer firms has changed the streetscape of Green Hall, giving it a higher degree of respectability. The street has indeed benefited from some degree of gentrification though it is still rather messy towards the shore end. It would be great if that neglected seaside park is spruced up for public enjoyment. As it is, Penang is still a long way from Singapore as far as tidiness of public places is concerned. If you ask me, it's not height control that we need, but rather a heightened degree of civic consciousness. Well, we are approaching the junction of Light Street and with that, this walk is coming to an end. I hope you enjoyed this session with me. It's not a very long walk compared to some of my other videos. My intention is to have a video for every historic street in Penang, long or short. That way, I can preserve my knowledge and personal memories of places covered. If you enjoyed this video, do take a moment to give it a like and also subscribe to my channel so that I can bring you more walking tours like this one. You can also visit my website Penang Travel Tips for more place information, not only of Penang, but also places in Malaysia, Singapore and elsewhere. Until we meet again in my next video, thanks for watching.